So a lot of people that know me know that I edit a lot of videos on a weekly basis for clients, for friends, and for fun. And they always ask me, how do you get videos out so quickly? And I think it all comes down to having a solid editing workflow. So today I'm gonna show you my editing workflow and why I think you should try this out. Welcome back to the channel. My name is Camillo and welcome back to another Quick Tip Tuesdays here at DKD21 Media. So if you're new to this channel, I make videos about photography, videography, editing. So if you like that kind of stuff, make sure to subscribe so you can get notified when I make a new video. So in this video, I'm gonna teach you how to hack your editing workflow to firstly increase your editing speed and secondly, quickly get into the flow state of video editing. But firstly, what is the video editing flow state? The flow state is when you're editing seamlessly without any friction. You know what the purpose of the video you are editing is, you know where the clips are on the software, you know what you need, what you don't need, or what was 10 seconds before your cursor, and what will be 10 seconds in front of it. There's no stalling, no logic, every inch of your body is pumped with creativity. Flow state is when nobody in the world can take you off the computer, where you forget to eat, drink, or sleep because you're in the flow. And this is where you're meant to be as a video editor. And that's what I'm gonna teach you today. Uh, so let's get started. So most workflow videos will talk about how you should set up your folders, etc., etc. So I'm gonna get that out of the way. You should have in your project a folder for one footage divided into B-roll and A-roll. A-roll are like interviews or talking headshots. And B-roll is footage that can go on top of your A-roll to complement it. Two, audio. This is for sound effects like wishes, Foley and interview backup audio if you have it. I sometimes use it for transition sound effects and the actual song of your video. Three, graphics. This is for logos, images, overlays. I put my adjustment layers here too because I sometimes use them for color grading. And most importantly, sequences. This is where you find all the sequences that you will work on on your project. For more complicated editing, you would have your nested sequences here. And this is very important because you don't want any clunk on your bins. It's very irritating when you're trying to find a, a video, a file, audio, sound effects, if you have to like, search through and sift through a bunch of stuff. So making sure you have your photos done right, is very essential. Okay, now that that's out of the way, it's time for the real tip. One, how to get into flow state. Now that we know what it is, how do we actually get into it? When editing any video, you need to know what resources you have that would go onto your timeline, onto your video, as well as obviously having an idea as to what you're going to edit. To make sure I have everything I need, I start any project by making a sequence called initial selects. Now pay attention because this is key. So this is the only time where you need to go through every clip, find the best bits of what you want to take out of the clip and add it to your timeline. The best B-roll shots, the best dialogue. This timeline hence becomes a pool of the very best footage that you have. This avoids having to go back every time through your clips when you want something to add to your editing sequence. You only do this once, hence saving you time. And you can do this on any software that has bins. So here's an example of me actually getting the footage onto an initial selects timeline. I'm basically double clicking on a, on a shot, I'm going through it, I'm selecting what I want and I'm adding it to the timeline. Then I go through the rest of the clip to see if there's anything else. Then I go on to the next shot. Do the same thing, rinse and repeat until you go through all of your footage. And once you have this timeline ready, you will make a new sequence and you're gonna call this your main edit sequence. You're gonna call it bar mitzvah, wedding, best B-roll montage ever. And this is where the flow state begins. You're gonna take the initial selects timeline and you're going to put it above your main edit timeline. From here, you will add your music onto the main timeline. You can add your titles as well. And you can begin scrubbing through your initial selects timeline and finding out which footage you wanna to add to that bit of the track on your main timeline. This is where the efficiency really kicks in. Say for example, you're editing an interview, you will drag and drop your A roll, and when you wanna add some B roll, you can just scrub through your initial select sequence. It will not only be easy for you to see what you have, because it's all on one timeline, but you're guaranteed that every time you click and drag a clip, that is the best clip that you have that you shot, because you've already pre-selected it. And you can safely rest, because you know you've already cut out the excess and cut out the shots that didn't come out that good. And now you can move on and you will see that your workflow isn't being stopped or hindered by having to go into the bins, the photos of your clips, double clicking your clips, finding the right timestamp of the clip, selecting the in point, selecting the out point, and then dragging it down into your main timeline. You've already done that once. You don't have to do it anymore. That little bit of time saving allows your brain to stay in its flow state without being interrupted. And it also helps you know at the beginning if there are clips that are irrelevant and it stops you from wasting time going through clips that you've already seen before or that aren't relevant to the actual footage. By forcing myself to do this process before every edit, I have been able to edit long interviews in less than half the time that I used to before. This is a more three-dimensional approach to editing instead of a linear approach. 
One more thing that will help you is also favoriting common effects that you use. You can do this very easily by just clicking and dragging an effect that you use into a favorites folder. For so long, I'd find myself typing out all the effects that I had to use like constant gain, warp stabilizer. But with this simple method, I can just click and drag the effects, which also stops me from getting distracted and keeps me in that flow state. Also, switch off your phone. Try it out, see what works for you. If it does, let me know in the comments below. If you like the video, leave it a like. And if you want to see more things like this and get notified when I make a new video, click subscribe. And I'll see you in the next one.